Drug trafficking is a global issue. With the rise of international trade over the last 30 years, there has also been a rise of opportunities to traffic illicit goods. More than 80% of the world trade is shipped via containers. But of these containers, only 2% are ever checked. And this can allow illegal trade to piggyback on the infrastructures and routes of the legal trade. This is the story of how the global trend is affecting the Western Balkans and why. So how did the Western Balkans get so involved in the global drug trade? It starts with the big picture. The demand for drugs in Western Europe is particularly high. The wars of 1990s mean that many Western Balkan countries are young countries, still starting out. These wars yielded large numbers of individuals trained in violence. The economic instability also meant a lack of local opportunities, giving a life of crime more appeal. The flow of illicit money through these countries is around 6% of their GDP. And this comes with costs. The drug trade empowers and enriches organized crime. This can corrupt governments and destabilize the region. Then there is the opportunity presented by ports specifically. Ports offer naturally the perfect conduit, the perfect place for illicit trade to infiltrate the legal channels. Around 850 million containers are shipped annually and only from 2 to 4% are actually physically inspected and checked. This is the area of the Port of Copper, which is 290 square kilometers large. And beside that, we have an area on the seaside, which is off limits, which is 180 square kilometers large. So normally, containers will stay on the trucks and they will just go through a warehouse with a scanner. It won't pick up any illicit product. It will just pick up explosives or anything of that sort. Once the container instead is flagged by customs, it will be taken in a different part of the terminal and where customs will open the container, sometimes with the help of uh, sniff dogs or sometimes with the help of specialized personnel. New research suggests that the tentacles of criminal groups from the Western Balkans now extend all over the world. From 2018 to 2020, we have seen a strong increase in seizures of cocaine. For example, in Duras, in 2018, 613 kilograms of cocaine were seized in our container. Not far from here, in the port of Bar, for instance, more than a ton of cocaine has been seized in the same time frame. Given the low numbers of cocaine consumption in the region, we believe everything that passes by this region is meant to go to Western Europe. This is just a transit point. Initially, criminal groups help other criminal organizations to traffic cocaine from Latin America to Europe. But right now, they're ba basically dealing, managing that business from production sources in uh, Latin America to growing consumer markets in, in Europe. Europol estimates that currently at least 30% of drug trafficking from Latin America to Europe is in the hand of the Balkan criminal groups. The main aim of the Balkan criminal groups, like each criminal organization, is profit. There is no overarching organized Balkan cartel, but Balkan criminal groups operate in a cell mode. And right now there are 20 cells and each cell have 10 to 15 members. There are a lot of chains and a lot of links. It's not easy for law enforcement to tackle. What tactics the criminal use to get ahead in their game of cat and mouse with law enforcement? How and where do they find weaknesses? We have observed two main techniques of concealment of illicit substances inside containers, the hide-and-seek and the rip on rip off The hide-and-seek consists of filling fresh fruit boxes, typically bananas, with packages of illicit substances, especially cocaine in the case of flows from Latin America. Fresh fruits in general are the ideal carrier for illicit trade. They are shipped at a high frequency, and the fact that they're perishable needs fast and easy checks. In the last five to 10 years, we have seen a general decrease 
of containers carrying general goods uh, to Adriatic ports, but at the same time, we have actually seen an increase in the numbers of imports of bananas from Latin America and specifically from Ecuador. And this, of course, raises questions. The rip on rip off instead consists of breaking open containers that are sealed with custom seal and filling these containers with packages with boxes of illicit substances and then closing again the containers and put a fake custom seal. In Dures, for example, there is a five to 10 minutes drive from where the containers are unloaded and where actually they are then checked. This is a huge opportunity for criminal networks to intercept the container and remove the illicit substances before the container is scanned. There are, of course, maritime security systems and procedures that help the cats to catch the mice. So usually containers are assigned three colors. The green, when the container is free to go. Then the yellow, when there is reason to run at least a digital check on the container and then the red when there is an alert. So in that sense, customs are required to physically inspect the container. As with any regulation or anti-crime venture, the cat must be led by the tactics of the mouse. An arms race of defense measures and criminal circumventions develops. The more you tighten up the security of ports, the more you push trafficking out of the port. Before, all you needed was a container that carried your cocaine, and then at some point in the port, someone would open the container, pick up the cocaine, and move out of the port. Now you have to make sure that the container leaves the port and goes to another location, where then you can go yourself and pick up the cocaine there. Traffickers have developed new and more sophisticated concealment techniques. For instance, the use of big boxes attached to the hull of the ship under the sea level, thanks to the employment of specific divers. At the port of arrival, other divers are needed in order to unscrew this box and then take the, the drugs or the illicit substances. Another technique that we have observed in the region is also, for instance, the use of fishing vessels, leisure boats that approach big container ship and take the packages or boxes of drugs before the ship approaches the port. Another technique consists of dropping bags of illicit substances at sea before the container ship approaches the port and attaching a GPS tag on these boxes that can be, of course, then found later. So what are some of the ways that authorities are trying to deal with the problem? One potential action is tightening port security. In general, regional ports comply with international security standards, and this means the presence of security fencing with CCTV cameras coverage and also special checking procedures. Port security improvement can include better and more security checking procedures or even something like the deployment of underwater drones. In Duras, for instance, we have observed the presence of more than 140 CCTV cameras. There is also two layers of fencing. A good practice in place is the fact that all containers coming from risky areas, for instance, from Latin America, are checked. Digitalization in general reduces risks of corruption and exposure to bribery. However, digital systems create new weaknesses, such as exposure to hacking. Improvements in the security of ports will be in vain if they are undercut by corrupt officials, from dock workers to port and customs staff or even high-level enforcement personnel who provide protection. One of the recent cases that surfaced in public in Montenegro were referring to alleged involvement of the ex-president of the Supreme Court, Ms. Vesta Medenica, and her son. Europol was intercepting the phone calls between Ms. Medenica's son and organized crime group members, where we learned that Medenica was receiving a bribe in hundreds of thousands of euros in order to protect from prosecuting different organized crime groups. Every effort to fight organized crime in Montenegro was uh, uh, doomed even before it actually started because she was in position to actually influence the decisions, the prosecutions, the judges, the outcomes of the trials. We have discoveries of the huge corruption and the organized crime. But at the end of the day, at most cases, and it ends up with prosecuting the shippers or the custom officers or the port workers. Uh, we didn't have a single case when the prosecution and police actually discovered the seller or the buyer of the cocaine. So basically, those results were not sustainable, and Montenegro is still 
rather frying the, you know, the small rather than the big fish. What then can be done regarding corruption? When you look up, you will see the cranes, and the cranes will have different colors, usually with the logo of the company that runs the port. But in order to fight trafficking, you have to have involvement by the public institutions. We end up with private-public partnerships, which is a hybrid way to essentially make sure that everyone is able, both on the private sector side, so on the port authority side, the police and customs and whoever is running uh, any type of intelligence on the cocaine trafficking, on the public sector, share information. Because the real issue with ports all the ports in the world is not only that they don't share information within the same port, but they don't share information across other ports. In the Port of Copper, we have security coordination, which is bringing together all state players, like police, customs, and maritime administration. The container control program of the United Nations has put in place encrypted communication between port authorities, but we have observed that there is still big room for improvement in communication and information sharing uh, between port authorities and security providers. Looking for contraband in containers is like looking for a needle in a haystack, but there are ways of assessing risk, following and cutting the supply chains and going after the big fish. This is an international phenomenon that requires international cooperation. Only by understanding the phenomenon and its causes can we begin to do something about it?